Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community. If things like that interest you, then be sure to hit like and subscribe. Also, check us out on Patreon. Patrons help keep the mission alive. That's over at patreon.com slash KB9VBR antennas. Well, recently, I was a participant as a volunteer in the Wausau Marathon. Uh, the Wausau Marathon is a 26.2 mile race that goes around the greater uh, Wausau, Wisconsin metro area. And uh, this race is actually a pretty big deal. It's a uh, qualifier for the Boston Marathon. So it's, has, it's, a, it's a sanctioned race, it has a certified course, and it attracts a lot of people from a wide geographic area. So our amateur radio club, from the, early, from the start of this race, uh, became involved in helping with the health and welfare communications at the race. And uh, basically what we do is we'll have people uh, stationed at the water stops, we'll have uh, SAG vehicles, and also a uh, sweep uh, to ascertain where the end of the race is. And that's very important when you're providing communications because you want to know, you know how far back the tail is uh, from the leader, you know, what kind of pace they're running, etc. So you can anticipate, you know, when the end of the race is going to come into a certain water stop so that uh, supplies can be marshaled or um, stops can be closed down when we know that the, that the, the end is, is there for that uh, particular station. And that's where my um, role kind of came into being. Uh, this year I was the bicycle sweep for the marathon, so I provided uh, tactical communications and um, provide, uh, with, uh, on who was the ending runner at the race. So what I did is uh, was I used uh, not only voice communications with a two meter handheld, but also APRS. And APRS, or the Automated Packet Reporting System, is a tactical two-way uh, communications system that allows you to send, well, of course, messages and uh, location information in real time to other stations. But one of the problems with APRS is that um, transmission of a packet is always guaranteed, but reception is not. And this is a struggle that um, I've had as a longtime APRS user, and, and, and I'm sure others have too, because I've received uh, messages a lot of times with uh, people using their APRS on their handheld radios and wondering why a Digipeter or an iGate is never picking them up. So uh, in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, my APRS setup on the bicycle and um, some things that you can do to help improve your um, APRS uh, reception yeah, you know, when you're using a handheld radio. So to start out, uh, basically, I've used APRS for a long time on the bicycle, and uh, years ago, uh, I invested in the Yesu uh, VX8R, and uh, this one has served me very well for almost a dozen years on the bike as an APRS radio. But um, let me tell you uh, as a fact that uh, the antenna on, you know, the, the duck and rubber duck antenna on the radio will never give you a good performance at all, especially uh, when you're moving uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one is you've got low power, five watts. So you're, it's always going to be a struggle for your packet to uh, get out and be received by the Digipeter, especially if there are all multiple stronger stations that the Digipeter is picking up at the same time. It's, um, it's always a survival of the strongest, so the strongest signal is always going to win uh, with the APRS Digipeter. And next up, since you're moving and you've got this little antenna, uh, there's going to be a lot of flutter and uh, picket fencing, and that's going to uh, greatly reduce the signal quality of your APRS packet. So 
so to kind of fix that problem, you're going to need a, a few things. Number one, uh, you're going to need a good external antenna. The uh, rubber duck antenna is not going to cut it. Uh, number two, uh, you're going to need an adequate beacon rate. Uh, probably, you know, when I'm on the bicycle, I'll usually use a beacon rate of about uh, two minutes, uh, considering my speed. If it's if reception is really critical, I might go up to 90 seconds. But seldom am I going to use anything slower than three minutes, uh, a three-minute beacon rate on the, on the bicycle. And then finally, uh, what really I, I found is super helpful in um, increasing my uh, transmissibility or, or for a digipeter to receive me is to use a fill-in digipeter. And basically what a fill-in digipeter will do is it's, its specific purpose is to listen to those first hop packets, the wide 1-1 packet. And the fill-in dig digipeter will hear that and um, uh, digipede it so that a wider area or um, higher power digipeter can um, pick up and give you the second or the third hop necessary so that your signal can make it into an eye gate. Let's go into my kit that I used for uh, Bicycle Mobile. Starting off at the front of the bicycle, I've got my uh, handlebar bag here. Uh, this is a the Roadrunner uh, Burrito Supreme bag. Beautiful bag, uh, holds a lot of stuff, uh, waterproof, and it's got some nice uh, webbing in the front that you can clip your uh, transceiver in. Uh, using for uh, transceiver, I was using the uh, Yesu FT3DR. We connect that to an external antenna, and I'll turn the bike around so you can see what the external antenna is. Uh, speaker microphone, I got clipped to the back of the bag, but it's just the simple uh, Yesu speaker microphone. Uh, this helps immensely in hearing the, uh, the conversations. Uh, when you're on a bicycle, you really don't want the microphones clipped to your body. Um, all those cables can cause issues, but um, uh, this handlebar bag's got some nice uh, webbing and uh, points on it that you can easily click, clip that microphone on, and you can hear you know, the traffic, the radio traffic, uh, very well. Uh, as you're as you're moving with that speaker microphone, uh, the A channel was the the repeater we were using uh, for voice communications, and then the B channel was uh, set up for APRS. And I set a beacon rate of two minutes. Bike sweep, not control. Bike sweep, go ahead. Can you confirm that that number that dropped out was five eight three over? Roger, Roger, 583. And he dropped out at mile 16, correct? Uh, closer, he, he dropped out at mile 17. It was just, just at mile 17. And what is your current location right now, Michael? I am on the path. I just crossed the, the covered bridge. I'm on the, um, the path. Okay, and do you have anyone else behind you right now, or are you last? Uh, there are seven runners behind me, um, and then and the UTV. I'm going to make it, I'm going to go to the next water stop, and I'm going to hang there. Thank you very much, Canadian VBR okay, Bike Suite. Now turning the bike around, I have a, a rear rack, and on there I've mounted an antenna. And this is a homebrew uh, half-wave antenna. I, I built this out, uh, about 10, 12 years ago out of plans that I found online. I have a link to those plans in the video description below if you want to check this out. Uh, but basically, this is a fiberglass uh, bicycle flagpole. We took the flag off, and um, in the, the center portion uh, is I've, I've threaded on the outer braid of some RJ58 coax. Uh, there's a small coil here for the impedance match. Uh, we have uh, just a little choke ballon, and then just a length of RJ58 that runs uh, to the front of the bicycle and uh, connects to the adapter that's on the uh, handheld radio. Just some little pieces of Velcro that kind of keep uh, for cable management to keep the cable 
strapped to the uh, t uh, the rack and the top tube of the bicycle. Now, kind of now, kind of mounting this antenna to the to the bicycle was a little bit of a challenge, and uh, I came up with a solution by using the handlebar rack. Is that uh, I found um, just a little, little block of wood, uh, drilled a hole, uh, uh, cut it down to size, uh, drilled a hole into it, and uh, this uh, pole fits right into the hole, sort of friction uh, fits in into there, and uh, everything is, is hose clamped in place. So it, 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 did, it did the trick uh, and, uh, and worked quite well. Uh, one of the problems I always have is, is these, this antenna is going to sway as you're pedaling, and I just sort of um, use uh, some, a little bit of a more Velcro so that it doesn't sway so much. downhill. So how did it all work? Well, on the average, the whole thing worked uh, really quite well. I, prior to the marathon, I did a test ride where I just had the handheld radio with the duck antenna um, strapped to the front of the handlebar bag. Uh, it was a 30 mile ride. Uh, on a course that was pretty similar to the uh, marathon route, route course. In that um, little over two hours time that I was on that ride, I got approximately um, 12 packets that were <laughs> received by the, uh, by the eye gate. That means at a beacon rate of two minutes each, I should have had up to about 60 packets that I transmitted, but only 12 of them made it into the system. That's not very good at all. So I knew that an external antenna is, was really going to be critical for the success of my ability of being tracked. So on the actual uh, marathon race day, I had the external antenna on the back of the bike. We still had the beacon rate set to, to uh, two minutes each. I still had my fill-in digipeter at my house. And um, for approximately the six hours I was out there, uh, I should have had an estimated uh, 180 packets that were beaconed out during that time. Almost, almost half, almost half of the packets made it into the system, which is actually, I think, quite good. And it, the system may have actually uh, received more, but uh, there was points in time where I was uh, standing still at a water stop for an extended period of time, and those packets may have been filtered out of the system. But the uh, net control had no problem uh, tracking me uh, using the APRS.FI application, or the, web, the website. So they saw where I was uh, located pretty much most of the time. I could uh, call in my position if I needed to, to uh, give them uh, a better uh, idea of where my location was, you know, especially if I was if I was stopped or if I hadn't been beaconing for an extended period of time. But uh, as the system works, and I think that's the key. I think good infrastructure along with uh, a good setup is what's really necessary for uh, an APRS system to be a, a successful in, in, an, in events like this. <laughs> Six miles in for today. <laughs> so I forgot to unpause. Crap. More like 29. Wow. <laughs> You're only supposed to go 26, dumbass. <laughs> yeah. So APRS with a handheld radio can work with the uh, the proper infrastructure setup and using an external antenna. Well, do you have any questions about using APRS uh, for uh, 
say a public uh, service event, uh, bicycling, uh, hiking, things like that, I'll leave them in the comments below. I'll try to go through them and answer your questions the best I can. Who knows, maybe yours will end up on our next Your Questions Answered live stream. But for more articles and information and uh, antennas for sale, check out my website at www.jpol-antenna.com. Support of this channel drives the production of future videos. Uh, you can help me out uh, by hitting like and subscribe. Those are great for the algorithm. And also check us out on Patreon. Patrons help keep the mission alive. That's over at patreon.com slash kb 9 vbr Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.